In Open Rewrite Recipes, a visitor is where the core logic lives. All Open Rewrite visitors share a common structure and life cycle. The purpose of the visitor pattern is to define a new operation without introducing the modifications to an existing object structure. Let's see how this works with an example. We're going to write a recipe, which I think will be will teach a lot about how to use the visitor pattern in Open Rewrite. I've selected an example that kind of really shows a number of different features of visitors. To do this, like let's start before we get into like the details of visitors, let's just start with writing a quick uh, unit test. So in Open Rewrite, uh, a, an Open Rewrite unit test is a class that ex implements rewrite test. This default section here, where we say spec dot recipe and provide a recipe, basically configures the recipe that will be uh, ran for all of the unit tests below. It's very similar to like a J unit before each block. It sets the expectation for the rest of the class. And for this test, um, we're going to write a recipe that takes a class like this. And um, let's do something like, it's, let's say it returns, we've got something like this and it returns um, some integer like this. And if the, these are just literals and they sum to 42, then we will replace this with the answer to life, the universe, and everything. Good old hitchhikers kind of reference here. So that's going to be our goal. To come over here to the, so we're going to go over to the recipe. First, let's just run this. It should fail because we haven't put anything in our recipe yet. And it's interesting to see you know, how it fails. Here it says the recipe was expected to make a change, but made no changes. So we're gonna actually have to do something with our recipe. So in open rewrite, the get visitor method is how we implement a visitor that can potentially edit a file. That visitor is instantiated once for each source file and it's given an opportunity to, um, to make modifications on it. There's a number of visit methods inside of here. Um, and these visit methods are, you can think of them as almost like event systems for, uh, like, or an event system for uh, different um, types of, or the, the different syntax inside of uh, the Java language. So I could say visit method declaration, and for every method declaration in a block of Java code, this method's going to get called. If you're new to re open rewrite or maybe, you know, language, the loss of semantic tree in general, it can be hard to know what to, to implement, like which visit method to use. So one quick way of doing this is just to implement visit compilation unit. And this is the one that you just would want to try to remember. A compilation unit is the top level root LST element. So that would represent this entire file. And if I just set a breakpoint on this and I go over here and I run this test again, then I can just look in the debug window here and look at this CU, this compilation unit and see kind of what data is on it. You see it has classes on it. You know, we tend to think of uh, Java files as having one class, but of course there can be multiple top level classes. So inside of the class, we see a body, that's the block. Um, we see a set of statements. You know, there's an element, which is a method declaration. So this kind of gives you a hint. If I really wanted to intercept this method declaration, this int test right here, I should maybe look for a visit method that looks something like that. So let's do that. And sure enough, so we've, we've taken this, uh, this method declaration. Now, if I wanted to make a change to a method declaration, um, say I wanted to change the name of it, 
you know, if the method's name is test, then change it. I, I have to use what's called a, a with method. So a with a wither will make the change to the LST element. Each LST element is actually immutable. So this will return a new object. And that new object um, will percolate all the way back up to the top and results in a change. So this would be with simple name if I wanted to do that. That's that's kind of the first thing to note. I think if I actually run this right now, it fails, but it says, it gives me a very descriptive message. It says the LST contains missing or invalid type information. So it's pointing to this, this particular method declaration. Note that this is like per, it's like a stack that you're reading backwards. Method declaration, which was defined inside of a block, which was defined inside of a class, which is defined inside of a compilation unit. And it's pointing out the specific one. And it's saying that, um, yeah, that the type information has a different name, method name uh, test. And so here, by saying with name, we've changed the syntax of the code to show the answer to life, the universe, and everything. But in an open rewrite LST, we have not only the syntax, but we have what we call type attribution. We have the full information about the, the, uh, the definitions of the methods that we're dealing with. And so it, the, the test harness is trying to hint at us that if we really want to change this correctly so that subsequent recipes would have the right information when looking at this method, we should not only change the syntax, we should also change the type attribution information. So here we're just gonna say, yeah, method dot, that's with name, and then we're just gonna set it to, you know, the same thing we set up here. Gotta get the right number of parentheses. This is just saying get method type could potentially be null. So we can just, most method type attributions will not be null. So one quick way of just preventing a null pointer exception in a bug is just making an assertion to that effect. So we'll, we'll run it again. This actually passes, but of course it doesn't yet know that if it's not 42, that it shouldn't change the name because we've just kind of naively always changing the name if it has the name test, right? So we want to change the condition. We want to be able to, this is the method I'm interested in changing, but I want to look down into its contents to see the sum of all these integers to see whether they equal 42 and whether I want to change the name. So how would I go about that? Again, we need to think of the open rewrite LST as an event oriented system. So if I visit literal, this is going to intercept each of these, these integer literals here. But, and, and the surrounding Java ISO visitor is responsible for, um, for kind of like navigating all the intermediate elements. So, you know, if, if I say visit method declaration, if I just look at this definition, you'll see that the default implementation of this method is to visit the annotations, its modifiers, its type parameters, its, you know, its return type expression, its name, and its body. So eventually, if, if I just call super somewhere in this method, then I should be able to get to this, this literal. Let's put a breakpoint there and see. And so here I've intercepted that literal. And sure enough, you see that value is 22 right here, that first literal. And if I continue, then I'm going to get hit again here at 21. So let's think about something in, in any given visit method and throughout this, the execution of this recipe. There's a method I could call called get cursor. And get cursor, let's just run this again and breakpoint here again. You can think of the cursor as the stack of elements that got me to this point. So you can, if you read this right here, you can see a cursor 
I'm at a literal, but that literal was contained inside of a binary expression, which was contained inside of a return, which was contained inside of a block, which was contained inside of a method declaration. So to see it over in the code, I'm at this literal. This literal is inside of a binary expression, which itself is in, ter in turn in part of this return, which is inside of this block, which is inside of this method declaration, right? Um, so yeah, the cursor is a temporary thing. It gets created and destroyed as the LST is being visited. Um, but one thing we're going to take advantage of here is the ability to do what's called cursor messaging. So um, on cursors, you can put little messages um, that uh, can be read by other visit methods. So on this cursor, um, we can, we really want to put a cursor message here on the method declaration. And I'll show you why here for a moment. So on the cursor, you can say, you know, um, get, you could say drop parent until the cursor value is a method declaration. So again, we're basically just going, we're just kind of like looking at the whole cursor stack and we're kind of popping one element out uh, off at a time until we get up to this method declaration. So this would be, I'm just gonna call this method right here. Just replace this. Now, I wanna put a little if condition because literals can be, um, literals can be literals for integers, for strings, for Booleans, et cetera. And we're really only interested in counting up or summing up all the integers. So I'll say if literal, Actually, I'll just say literal.get value. If value is an instance of integer, then we're going to say, you know, get message sum, and you can provide a default value. So we're going to say we're going to start with zero if there's no sum yet. And we can put a message back on that cursor with the existing sum plus this value as well. So let's kind of debug here and see how this how this looks. When control first reaches here, the sum is zero, but the value is 22. So I'm going to put that message on the cursor. And then when I visit the, the 21 literal, then the sum is already 22, so we're going to be putting 43 on there, right? Cool. Um, now, up here, I would be able to, I want to change this condition, right? I want to be able to say, if get cursor. Now, the cursor at this point is going to be pointing to the method declaration because that cursor, these downstream things have been popped off the stack by this point. And so I'll say, um, you know, if get cursor dot get message sum will default to the zero in case there is no literals equals 42, then I want to change the method, right? Let's try to run this and see what happens. See if this ever gets hit here. It doesn't ever get hit. It says the recipe was expected to make a change, but made no changes. And so if we look at this closely, we think about the location of this super call is very important. If, let me assign this to a local variable here. If I move this ahead of this, this request to the cursor message, then that means that all of the rest of the subtree underneath the method declaration will be visited first. If I put it after, it's not actually visited until after this condition. So it's very important to, to put that kind of in the right place, right? To, to, and usually I'd say we tend to call super early. Just as a matter of convention, it's easier for us to reason about. We go ahead and let the tree get navigated deeply because that, that gives uh, subsequent visit methods the most time to like add, add data for us to consider as part of our decision. Oops, still didn't. 
get called here. This again. So right now the the cursor. Oh, I think it's because we haven't changed our unit test. So right now the result is 43. And so that never gets hit. Let's go back to the unit test. Say 21, 21. And so you see now that we're, we're able to get that sum, which we've been adding data to down below, and we're able to change the method. So lastly, I would say um, there's nothing to prevent you from visiting this subtree twice. You could do it up here and you can do it again down here, um, kind of a like a before operation and an after operation. So the visitor pattern basically um, by default, as long as you call super, will continue to navigate down the tree, but it puts you, the recipe author, in control of when that subtree navigation happens, or if it even happens at all, you can always put an if block around this and just not call super at all. Um, so when, how many times, or if it happens at all is completely up to you. Hopefully that explains a little bit more about the visitor pattern and how we use that to make modifications. To learn more about authoring recipes, check out our documentation.